And I'm happy to introduce Katerina Pichur, who is going to be... Katerina Pichur is my Pichur. I'm sorry, my... sorry. Okay. Uh, who's going to be talking about asymptotic properties of dynamics of antibody levels. Stage is yours. Please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for, for a very nice introduction. Uh, I will talk about applications of um, stochastic semi-group uh, in a study of a general model of immune status. Uh, my presentation is based on our uh, several papers with Richard Rudnicki, including uh, the last one just submitted to a journal. Um, what is the immune status? The immune status is a concentration of specific antibodies which uh, appear after infection with a pathogen, remain in serum, and prevent reinfections. But over time, the um, number of uh, antibodies decreases until the next infection, decreases according to this equation. Uh, during fighting the invader, the immunity is boosted. So if X is the um, immune status at the moment of infection, before infection, then uh, G of X is uh, immune status just after clearance of infection. We assume that the time that it takes um, the immunity to clear infection is negligible. Uh, what about uh, the moments of infection? We assume that the length of the period between infections dep depends on the um, immune status just after clearance of infection and uh, has probability density distribution, Q. It means that uh, such an uh, integral is a probability that this period is less than A. Uh, by U, we denote the number of uh, antibodies at time T. Uh, here, XB is uh, immune status just after clearance of infection. A is a time that uh, has passed uh, since infection. Uh, by P, we denote the, the rate uh, of jump from our point to the point uh, where the immunity is uh, just after clearance, uh, the next, in next infection, just after clearance reinfection. So uh, we can simply, uh, simply say that P is a, a rate of uh, reinfection. We introduce a family of the probenus peron operators, um, which um, describes uh, the relation between uh, initial immune status and the in immune status uh, after a clearance a reinfection. So uh, PU is a number of antibodies uh, before reinfection. If we compute uh, the value of operators PA uh, on this function and if we integrate uh, over all A, then uh, we obtain uh, the number of uh, antibodies just after clearance reinfection. And so uh, in this way, we obtain the following boundary condition and um, our function U satisfies um, the following uh, initial boundary problem. Um, the system uh, generates a stochastic semi-group on some space L1, um, where Y is uh, a two-dimensional set, um, where uh, the initial immune status and A are non-negative um, numbers. Uh, in the proof that uh, this system generates a stochastic semi-group, we use the boundary uh, perturbation theorem by uh, Marta Trantaminska and her uh, PhD student uh, Piotr Gdysz. But um, another proof of this fact can be done directly using uh, Hiroshida theorem. Uh, let us uh, remain uh, the definition of stochastic semi-group. 
Mm -hmm. um, continuous uh, semi-group, continuous semi-group of stochastic operators is called stochastic semi-group. A uh, stochastic operator is an such an operator from the space L1 to L1, which preserves the set of densities. Uh, density uh, is a, a function uh, from L1, non negative with norm 1. Uh, note that the iteration of um, uh, of uh, stochastic semigroup also forms the uh, uh, semigroup of stochastic operators uh, 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 also form the um, semigroup. Uh, it's called uh, discrete semigroup. Uh, the main topic, uh, the main aim of my uh, talk is to show that um, our semigroup connected to, uh, to our system uh, is asymptotically stable or um, is sweeping. So uh, we say that uh, stochastic semigroup is asymptotically stable if uh, it has invariant density. And if we start from another density, then uh, PT of F goes to this invariant density as T goes to infinity. Sweeping is an uh, uh, opposite um, condition, uh, opposite co property, uh, and we say that a semigroup uh, is sweeping from set B if uh, such integral goes to zero as T goes to infinity. Uh, we prove our theorem uh, for partially integral uh, Markov semigroup. We say that uh, semigroup is partially integral if it uh, is bounded below by uh, such kernel part. Here a function k is non-negative with double integral positive. And we have the following theorem. Uh, if our semigroup is partially integral, and if it is continuous, it's very, very important. And if our semigroup has a union, uh, has a invariant density, this density is unique and positive, then our semigroup is asymptotically stable. Uh, another very uh, important uh, condition that um, our semigroups might satisfy is condition uh, K. Uh, we say that a semigroup, stochastic semigroup, satisfies condition K uh, if it is uh, partially integral and if a kernel is not only non negative function, but also for every point it is uh, estimated for uh, below um, by such a factor. And uh, we have the following theorem. If our stochastic semigroup is discrete or continuous, no matter what, and if it satisfies condition K, and if this semigroup has no invariant density, then it is sweeping from all compact sets. This theorem is a um, simply consequence of uh, the decom decomposition theorem for uh, stochastic uh, semigroups and stochastic operators. Uh, in uh, the case uh, where our semigroup is continuous, uh, we have the um, following uh, theorem. Uh, if uh, our semigroup satisfies condition K, then uh, our space can be divided into parts where we have uh, supports of invariant densities. And on this part, we have um, some kind of uh, stability, of asymptotic stability, and sweeping from, um, from um, on the space beyond the um, 
the supports of invariant densities. Uh, so if uh, we have no invariant density, then this set is empty set and uh, we have sweeping, our semigroup is sweeping from all compact sets. In the case when uh, our semigroup is, um, is uh, discrete, then uh, we have the similar uh, theorem, but, uh, but here we have some kind of um, asymptotic periodicity, and, but uh, this part is exactly the same. Uh, let us return to a semi-group um, generated by uh, our system. First, we restrict um, this semi-group to some space L1. Uh, here, this set uh, is determined by uh, our system. Simply speaking, I uh, is a set of all possible initial, um, uh, initial uh, immune status and uh, zero infinity contains all A. Uh, we show that uh, our semi-group satisfies a condition K. Under, uh, uh, of course, some suitable uh, assumptions. So, if our semi-group satisfies condition K, then it is, uh, of course, partial integral. And if we want to prove that this semi-group is asymptotically stable, then by theorem one, we must to show that it has uh, a unique invariant density, and then uh, it, this density is positive. Uh, we show that uh, our semi-group has a unique invariant density if and only if such operator has a unique invariant density. This operator is defined on uh, such space L1. Uh, here, uh, I is a uh, one-dimensional set of um, initial uh, immune status. Uh, uh, operator T is, give, is given by such a formula, and uh, our operator T is a stochastic operator. Moreover, we show that uh, this operator satisfies condition K and has the following property that if operator T has invariant density, then this density is positive. So we have two possibilities. One, the operator T has invariant density, then this density is positive. And also, by the previous uh, theorem, our semi-group has a unique invariant density and it is positive. So by, con uh, by theorem one, it is asymptotically stable. Another possibility, T has no invariant density, but, but, but T satisfies condition K. Then by theorem two, it is sweeping from all compact sets. Uh, but if our space is bounded, it means that it's also compact, then uh, of course our semi-group uh, cannot be sweeping from the, from the whole space. So it has invariant density and our semi-group also has positive invariant density and it is asymptotically stable. So we prove the following theorem in the case when uh, our uh, space I is bounded set, then semi-group PT is asymptotically stable under some suitable um, assumptions. Uh, in the case when uh, I is unbounded set, then uh, we have to exclude sweeping of operator T. Uh, in order to exclude sweeping, we add two additional assumptions. Uh, this assumption means that for a large X, the, um, decree, uh, the number of um, antibodies decreases very fast. We have now two uh, large uh, jumps. 
is so uh, so uh, under such assumptions. Our semi-group is asymptotically stable. Uh, only also in the case when I is unbounded set. Uh, what about sweeping? Sweeping is no uh, such a bad uh, condition. <laughs> and uh, in our model, uh, we uh, give uh, we, we give some condition for sweeping of operator T, namely if uh, our function f, functions f and g satisfies some such uh, conditions for some constants b and c, and if we have the following uh, relationship between uh, between this constant uh, and uh, function Q, which is a probability density distribution of the length of the period between interactions, then uh, our uh, operator uh, T has no invariant density. Has no invariant density means that it's sweeping. And uh, also our semi-group has no invariant density since it, it satisfies condition K. It is also sweeping. But uh, in this case, uh, we, mm, 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 our semi-group satisfied the uh, following stronger sweeping condition, this one. Uh, it means that, uh, that uh, our semi-group is sweeping from all sets uh, of uh, this form. Uh, it means that our immunity is outside uh, this set. Uh, and we can interpret this result as uh, asymptotic permanent immunity of population. Uh, and some examples. First example is when uh, our infection depends on uh, immune status. Uh, here XA is the immune status thus um, after uh, time A since infection. Uh, then uh, we assume that the rate of reinfection uh, is uh, given by uh, such formula. And in this case, we can uh, compute the probability density uh, distribution. In particular, if we have exponentially decay of uh, antibodies, then uh, our um, uh, function Q uh, is uh, on this form. Um, uh, many uh, biological, biological papers uh, propose uh, the hypothesis that uh, this function Q um, has a gamma distribution. And uh, in our case, we have some, here we have some computer simulation, which shows that um, we obtain almost uh, gamma distribution. Mm. Uh, certain epidemics um, occur seasonally. Uh, so uh, we, uh, for example, we have uh, three or four uh, cycles of, of pertussis. Mm, and um, uh, here uh, we have example uh, when our reinfection depends on the epidemic course. Uh, the rate of reinfection here is proportional to, uh, to the number of uh, infected people uh, in such a way. Mm, and if uh, we have exponentially decay also of antibodies, then we can uh, calculate uh, our uh, probability density distribution. Uh, we have the following uh, simulation, computer simulation. Uh, here we have uh, the graph 
of the function n, n is a number of uh, infected people. Uh, T is a uh, average time between uh, successive uh, outbreaks of epidemic. And here we have the graph of the function Q. As we see, this function is multimodal function with um, local uh, maxima near to this point T. Uh, conversely, uh, if we know uh, this function, then we can uh, predict the course of epidemic, as I see. Uh, the next example, it is, it's a model with a threshold concentration, concentration of antibodies. Uh, some infection, um, for example, pertussis, uh, occur uh, when antibody level falls because be below a um, threshold, threshold level of uh, antibodies. Uh, so uh, we can, uh, in this uh, case, we can calculate the time after which the immune status reach this uh, level, this threshold level, and uh, the length of the, of the period between infection is um, sum of this time and of some random variable, non-negative random variable. We also uh, can calculate uh, the probability density distribution in this, in this case. Uh, and in the case of exponentially decay, uh, uh, of course, um, assuming that, that uh, our random variable uh, has density h here. Uh, no. If uh, we have exponentially decay of uh, antibodies, then uh, it is, I think it is uh, also interesting that we can uh, calculate the expected value of uh, the time uh, between infections is on this form. And it, it is in interesting that um, this uh, expected value is on such a form. Uh, here we uh, have uh, uh, initial uh, uh, immune status, uh, here threshold. Uh, mm, and this, uh, this expected value is similar as uh, expected value uh, in the case uh, where we have an infection uh, dependent on immune status. So it's all. <laughs> Thank you very much for attention. Thank you, Katerina, uh, for the very nice talk. Does somebody have any questions? Sorry. I have a question, if I may. Yes, please, you can. Um, so, first of all, your results about asymptotic stability. Do you see any chance to also prove, uh, let's say, uniform stability in case that the interval i is bounded? In case when uh, uh, when i is bounded, no. Yeah. In case where immune, immune status is bounded, here. Uh, uh, but uh, but uh, also uh, in case when a is bounded. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, in, only in case when immune status is bounded. Here, uh, as we see, our uh, our space is uh, in such a way. Here is A, yeah. and uh, here is a uh, set of immune status. Immune status can be uh, bounded, but uh, A is from uh, such, a, uh, such a set. Yes, yeah, so May I say something? Uh, is only asymptotic stability, but it's not uniform asymptotic stability. I mean that in the operator norm. It's asymptotic stability that convergence in one, but not convergence of operators. So is it clear that one never has convergence in operator norm? Mm -hmm. Not much more though. 
Do we know for sure that convergence as an operator norm cannot occur? Mm, me? <laughs> um, any of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, Professor Pichor, uh, Pichor, right? Pichor. Yeah. Um, can, can, we, can we be sure that we never have operator norm convergence? I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's possible to prove, say, uh -huh. stronger convergence here. But... Okay. okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? So in this case? <laughs> yes, please, your <laughs> Maybe could you show us this condition K once again? Okay. Uh, oh, this one? Yes, thank you. Okay. So this is stronger than just intracurrent kernel, right? Yes, it's very strong. I think that it's a rather strong uh, condition because it means that um, uh, we uh, K uh, describes um, uh, the going of uh, the system from uh, the um, point Y to the point uh, X. So it means that um, we can go from the whole neighborhoods um, that this 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 uh, uh, condition K, uh, that K is estimated by um, the here is I did from the whole uh, from the whole um, neighborhood of uh, every point uh, Y we can go uh, near to uh, another point and it is estimated by by such a function this function this function is non-negative with uh, integral positive so it's a rather strong uh, rather strong uh, condition. So is it correct if I say that this case and how relates the integral kernel to the topology of the underlying space. Can I interpret it as that? Mm, maybe. maybe okay. uh, and, and you need this condition but, okay, to get sweeping, right? Yeah, uh, but this is a still, uh, local condition, yes. to remember. So it's a, for example, you can imagine that you have some division of the space into some parts when you have such condition locally and uh, but uh, you are not able to deduce for example on this condition that you have global convergence and so on on the local but this condition is not for convergence in fact it's for sweeping Sweeping, okay. Yes, this is very important here because it's impossible to prove sweeping without this local condition. Yeah. Okay, I see. Thank you very much, both of you. Any other questions? No, then let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>